All right, crew, hello, hello. Here it is, your last video for this first six weeks. And in this one, we are talking about our friend, the oceans. That's right, this teak is 8.11d. You are to recognize human dependence on ocean systems and explain how human activities such as runoff, artificial reefs, or use of resources have modified these systems. Now, this is what we've been talking about this week, and remember, your test is on Friday over this stuff, so this should serve as a very rapid review for you. All right, first off, the ocean is our friend. We depend on it for just about everything. There's two major systems to worry about. The first one is ocean currents, which serve to move energy around the earth, and then you have ocean food webs, which serve to uh, provide nutrition as well as oxygen and a whole lot of other stuff that we use. As far as our own dependence goes on the oceans, the very first thing we need is, of course, the air oxygen. The ocean itself, the phytoplankton in the ocean, are responsible for about 70 to 80 percent of the oxygen that you breathe every day, even more than the rainforests. And so these guys are impossibly important. Here you see them right here. Sunlight comes down. Here's your phytoplankton carrying out photosynthesis just like plants do, except on a much larger scale. We also depend on the ocean for weather. That goes into the uh, whole current system that I talked about earlier. Uh, the oceans absorb lots of the sun's energy and provide uh, a method for getting it around the world. Warmer water means more evaporation, which means more rain, which is why the tropical areas end up with more rain than the rest of us. Um, cooler water, of course, by corollary, means less evaporation and therefore less rain. We also depend on the ocean for food. Seafood provides lots and lots and lots of the world's protein. To a lesser extent, we depend on it for transportation and also for recreation. And all these were things we talked about in the journals this week. Now, how can we mess with these systems? First off, overfishing. Not only does it disrupt the food web, it can cause organisms to migrate to other areas, and it can also cause some organisms to be like essentially removed from the food chain. It's like they might not go away or go extinct completely, but they could become so few that, that they're not really eaten by, or by us or by anything else, really. We talked about artificial reefs like the Texas Clipper. Now this is one of the good things we do for the ocean. These are the man-made underwater structures like ships or bricks or tires. Um, and they're built with the idea of promoting biodiversity. It's like because when you drop these things down into the ocean, little things come and live on them. The last one is runoff and pollution. And remember there's two kinds of runoff, uh, there's two kinds of pollution. There's point source, which you can trace, there uh, comes from factories or ships. Remember, if you can point at it, that's where the pollution comes from. It's point source pollution. Non-point source is, of course, things like runoff, uh, where you can't really say this bit of fertilizer came from this guy's lawn. Now, too much fertilizer can have numerous effects. It can cause harmful algal blooms, which can choke out the rest of ocean life. The same thing can happen in lakes and ponds. Okay, this video has been very, very short and shorter than normal. Um, so if you need to go back and pause it, of course, you are welcome to do so. Uh, but this should serve as a big points hit for this Friday's test. So, hope you all have a spiffy one, and I will talk at you all later.